Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Annie Bernice. I make videos about videos, freelancing, and digital marketing. Today, in this video, we are going to be talking about how you can start goal planning and goal setting for 2023, how I did it myself, and how the whole industry is going to change in this year. Okay, or what are the things that I am predicting or where this digital marketing industry is gonna go. And based from my arms, I think it's gonna go left or right in your screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start with New Year's resolutions. I don't have a New Year's resolution and I've not had that for a very long time. I think because as a kid growing up, I've tried doing it or having it and I've done it many, 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 many times to no avail because I'm not consistent and I like variety and novelty on things. And so I don't stick to a routine. I've always told you, you know, like in my Q and A's, my Instagram account or whatever, I, you've always asked me like, what's your morning routine? Like, I don't have any, like, hey, don't take it for me. <laughs> I don't really have sort of like a morning routine. I just wake up whenever I want because what really matters to me is I do what I want when I want it. So that's why I stick to whatever I feel like doing at that very time. Now, when it comes to New Year's resolutions, don't feel bad if you have a New Year's resolution and I don't have it. Or like, you're like, oh my God, so you don't have it, so I shouldn't have it. Please don't beat yourself up to it. It's just a matter of preference. So if you feel like having a New Year's resolution is kind of a beam of hope for you and that it's going to allow you to change or it's going to make you more motivated on the things that you are planning to achieve this 2023 go go have at it i'm just not into that and i think that if you're looking forward to incorporating this video into your new year's resolutions i totally advise that you drop it first because as an entrepreneur whether or not you're going to have a new year's resolution what's really best is that you always think about your business goals. What are your yearly business goals? And we're going to be talking about that or how I've done that in this year, okay? So after talking about New Year's resolution, let's go to the things that I think will happen in 2023 in the digital marketing industry. But the first one being freelancing is becoming a norm, like totally ever since in 2022, it's already a norm. Like people already know and understand what freelancing is. And if you ask them, if you explain it to them, they actually understand it more. And just today, I was so happy because at least here in my country, in the Philippines, I have found a list of highest income salaries or positions in the Philippines. And there's already a project manager, social media manager, and it just makes me so happy because now the country in itself is recognizing that these positions actually exist. So that is awesome. I do hope, however, that they understand that those people could be freelancers and are not employed. And so sometimes the income is a bracket instead of like a solid one flat rate every single month. So we are moving forward to that route. They're recognizing that the gig economy is possible. It's there. It exists. The second one, speaking of the fact that it exists, people now understand digital marketing more than the usual. Like people know that there is this Facebook ads and YouTube ads because they are going through it every single day. And so when you say digital marketing, Facebook ads, oh, okay, I understand what you're doing. So now I don't need to, as a digital marketer, I always put that in some forms, you know, as my type of job. I don't say that I'm an influencer, a YouTuber, like I don't put that anymore. I, I just put a digital marketing or digital marketer under the position space or where I'm supposed to write my profession. And now people understand that. So like there was one time that I had a very hard time explaining. I was in, in a bank. I was talking to this manager 
bank manager and she was like so what do you do ma'am and like i have to explain this whole thing about what i do and now people don't even ask for it anymore so that is awesome but mostly when you tell them the word or when you say digital marketing they still have a very vague idea about it they just think that you're running ads and that's all when in reality there are still a lot of onion skins onion skin you're basically like peeling an onion in that very sense where in currently in my country it's like very expensive to have red onions so that's very relevant so now with those expectations set for 2023 the goal of this youtube channel is really to get you into a point where you fully understand digital marketing and that if you decide to pursue such profession or anything in that very branch well you can go in and be confident about it you don't need to sort of doubt yourself because you know very well that you have this space on the internet this very real estate of mine <laughs> where you can just go through some of my videos or my courses if you want and understand where or how this whole thing this industry is going to go so that's the goal now let's talk about goal setting in 2023 and how i've done it so since i don't have a new year's resolution i don't try to sort of like change myself i simply focus on of course my career where i excel <laughs> so i just think about what are the things that i plan on doing on 2023 and usually by november end of the month or december first week i have already done that i don't wait for a new year's or for january to sort of do my marketing strategy for the next year and for some reason it's like a no-brainer thing for me to do because when it's already November, it's like, Ugh, I don't want to work anymore. I feel like I'm running out of time because, you know, you're reaching the end of the year. And as an entrepreneur, the new year actually comes like a new beam of hope in sort of way because there's plenty of room for you to explore and experiment on the products and services that you want to put out in that very year and you're not running out of time in a sense because it's the start of the year you have 10 11 12 months to explore on the products and services that you want to put out there so that is very amazing so when it's no time for november i'm like uh, I, really work right now, or I don't want to do anything so what i just do is i just plan all the things that I would want to do or would want to achieve in 2023. So how do I do that? First and foremost, let's not talk about revenue. <laughs> Try avoiding that very question first because the first thing that comes to your mind if it's 2023 or if it's a new year is that what's my yearly income goal next year? Well, that's also important and you can have that. I'm, knowing, I'm not going to hold you from having that very goal but i think that the first thing that you have to think about is where the things that you want to do okay regardless if that is in terms of revenue or not also the reason why i don't want to have a numerical revenue i do have it by the way but i'm saying that i don't focus on it because I'm just going to get stressed and burn out. I see that number and I get pressured and I say, oh, there are many things that I would, I would need to do in order to achieve that amount of money. Like last year, I went into that very year, 2022, with a very specific number in mind, which is 30 million pesos. And I did not achieve that. And so at the end of the year, I was kind of like, ah. Oh, but then I realized that it's not really just about the revenue. I enjoyed the whole year last year because I've had a physical business and I sort of became a serial entrepreneur because I opened a business after a business after a business. And that was very fun for me, although there were plenty of things, there were plenty of times when I felt very stressed out. But the question always goes back to what are the things that you want to do this year, regardless if it has something to do with revenue or not. Remember when I always talk 
about you following your passion or the things that you love or the things that you would want to learn, your curiosities, continue doing that when you're planning your 2023. So what are the things that you would want to do this year? Like, like what I've mentioned, in this year, I would want to work more. I'm getting married this year. As we speak, I only have, say, 84 days before I'm going to get married. So I have those plans in my head. So that's one thing that I would want to do. But still, after that or after the honeymoon, I would want to go back to my normal um, zen mode, which is work. <laughs> very nice zen mode so i would want to go back and like really go back to the time i remember the the time where i was really hustling was 2018 and 2019 where i was starting cra and i would want to go back to that time where i was really hustling because i just love that feeling of doing something out of the purpose that you plan for yourself or the purpose that you really want to achieve. And so go after what you would want to do for this year. List that down and then start plotting the dates if you can. The second one that I would want to suggest when you are goal planning for this year is sabbaticals. So I don't know if I have mentioned to you before what sabbaticals are, but this is the best time for me to discuss what sabbaticals are. Okay, I just repeated myself. <laughs> so sabbaticals are basically taking the seventh week off. Okay, so you're going to be working for straight six weeks. And then on your seventh week, you're going to take the week off. Also considering, of course, that in your first to six weeks, you're still going to take Saturdays and Sundays off. Okay, so in your calendar, for example, right now is January 6th. So it's the first week of the month. And then you have the second week after that, third week, fourth week, fifth week, sixth week, and then the seventh week, you're going to take the time off. And the week after that, you go back to counting week one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and six, and then seven, the seventh week after that, is going to be your week off again. But of course, again, considering that during those six weeks, sorry for the dogs, they're very, very noisy. <laughs> so considering also that in those six weeks, you're going to still take Saturdays and Sundays off. Okay, is it understandable? So why would you want to do that exactly? And that that's because you don't want to burn yourself out and that you can also plan your vacations wisely. And I'm sure this is just going to apply to the people who has time freedom. So if you're currently employed, well, your vacation leaves might be limited. It, it's not going to happen for a whole week. But even still, you can take some days of the seventh week off. And then you can start rehustling and rehustling in the next six weeks, just so your body would understand when to take a break. Okay, so that's something that you can start doing in this year. Third one is something that I would want to consider this year because according to the zodiac and horoscope readings, I'm going to have to zero in on my health, like really focus on it this year because it's really going to take a toll on me, which I'm very, very scared of. So I also include or plot days in my schedule where I'm going to do marathons, runs, and then I'm going to also bike. So I just bought a very nice bicycle. It's a second hand. And I would really love to bike on the weekends, Saturday, because if you are going to get married to a triathlete, duathlete, like someone who goes to the marathons, like it's nothing. That's my husband to be. <laughs> so it's it's really encouraging. I usually just stay at home and like not do anything, just face the computer, type, type, type. And so my posture really goes down. I also am not encouraged to go to the gym because it's a repetitive thing and it's very, very boring. And I just cannot understand like having to go back to the gym every single time. Like, And when I started running marathons and I started biking, that's also the time when I realized that this is actually fun and this is the type of workout that I want to incorporate in every single day of my life. Because apart from the fact that it's an activity that my love and I are going to do, 
and it's our sort of like bonding where well i can also get assured that i am exercising my body and that i sweat because it's very important plenty of people who are working from home doing freelancing stuff and basically anything digital marketing wherein you're just going to face your computer for the whole entire day and not go out and stretch they're actually more prone to diseases so if you're watching this right now and you have not done any sort of exercise like find an exercise that you're going to love like how i did so just try to discover i've done jump ropes and going to the gym having a personal trainer like home workouts doing the mobile app thing like none of that worked for me until i realized that i really wanted to go out and explore the world because i don't go out that much and just to have that avenue where you know, i am healthy and i am exercising my body that would be awesome so there's that and then when it comes to health also try checking in with your doctor i think that it's very important for you to have regular checkups i have an obgyn just to make sure that i don't get into you know the really horrible diseases out there that has something to do with your reproductive system there's also a general or physical checkup that you need to have this is where your medical insurance comes in you know we work hard for it we earn money we have to pay medical insurance so that we can also um, get in touch with our doctor, you know, physical activities and like that. You also put that in your calendar, please, please, because health is wealth. Regardless what you're going to do, we're going trying to achieve, well, it's all going to go to waste if we're not going to double check and come back to where our body really stands. So apart from that, well, your diet is also very important. <laughs> so I am not a good advocate or I'm not a the, the, the right person to talk about diet because I have a horrible diet but I try my very best to just be just do the micro decisions like for example in terms of having oil or cooking fried things in the house you can either steam it you can put it in the oven or do or choose a better type of oil so you can do a sunflower oil canola oil or olive oil just so it's a lot healthier and then you can start doing better decisions like not do not eat red meat so much go with the white meat chicken and fish uh, for this week, you know, like this, ju just those micro decisions that you can commit yourself to, just not super like radical cold turkey things in terms of health. I think that will really, really help. Okay, so that's in it for me in terms of the 2023 goal planning and goal setting. So I've tackled also a little bit of personal development on that side of the spectrum so i hope that is helpful now in terms of what you're going to expect from me this year let me know in the comments what are the things that you would want to hear from me what are the videos that you want for me to share do you want more tutorials do you want more discussions like this would you be more comfortable if i talked about like whole thing radical business stuff like ASAP or would you want me to ease right into the digital marketing and just like slowly climb up from there so let me know what you think let me know what your thoughts are and I'm going to see you in the next video